introducing right flows our brand new tool that's available for your advisors practices and it's a new and the ultimate workflow management solution that we offer so today we're going to be going over all the nuances behind right flows what it is about how you can utilize it in your practice just some background information about what right flows is so like i said right flows is the ultimate management workflow solution at its core right flows is designed to revolutionize your practice by providing a seamless experience within right capital and to be another go-to solution in your toolbox while leveraging our tools right flows empowers you to curate and manage your distinctive financial planning workflows without ever having to leave the right capital ecosystem whether your goal is to enhance client engagement boost your own personal efficiency or your firm's efficiency or to streamline your organization's planning processes. WriteFlows equips you with the essential tools for success. WriteFlows enables you to optimize your daily workflow procedures, and it can help you stay ahead of some crucial tasks and foster easy collaboration with your colleagues across the team. And you can easily assign some predefined workflows for yourself and your teammates, ensuring a consistent and collaborative approach to financial planning. Another key aspect to the right flows tool is that it allows for you to take your client engagement to the next level. Just like having an easy, easy pass towards team collaboration, you can seamlessly assign tasks to clients within a workflow, which further enhances communication and directly involves your clients in the planning process in a way that allows for you to build stronger relationships. And we're going to be talking about all these nuances and touching on each of these very important topics today. And so we're going to be highlighting how you can get started with right flows, what comes with right flows when you activate it, and also how to customize the six templates that comes with right flows to really reflect your firm's personalized process and streamlined process in right capital. We're also going to walk through how to tailor each of the tasks. So when you apply workflows, one of the templates that are available that, or that you curate, you can always go through and make sure that each of those workflows is customized to each of the client's needs as applied and if necessary, of course. We're also going to walk through how to implement it in your practice and also some of the available resources when it comes to specifically right flows as a tool house or a tool in your toolbox. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leverage that questions menu drop down on the GoToWebinar control panel. I'm more than happy to discuss anything or answer any questions you have. Um, some couple things, I already see this is a question. So this is a recorded webinar, so you will receive the recording as a follow-up, but you will also be able to always find the recorded webinars available in our Help Center, which we will touch on a little bit later as well. And so diving into right flows and shifting gears into the right flows tool that's available in Right Capital. So one of the major aspects with right flows is that this is something that is intended to boost your firm and your team collaboration aspects and really establish some of those streamlined and automated workflows while leveraging right capital and have it be an integrated experience for both you and your teammates. One of the aspects of this being a very easy to use and boosting team collaboration aspect of right capital is that you can curate these for your firm in terms of the templates that are available as an additional resource for advisors to use so if you're working in a firm with uh, multiple teammates assistants advisors there is the capability to curate templates and provide those as a resource for your advisors so this is a, a good space to, to start to talk about how to curate and customize right flows to you and your firm's specific needs when we're talking about right flows and these templates that are available, I hinted at it a little bit earlier, but it does come with six pre-built templates when you activate right flows. Those six templates are going to be the new client workflow, a quarterly review workflow, required minimum distribution workflow, Roth conversion opportunities, setting up a new client without client access, and setting up a new client with client access. So these are all six pre-built templates that are available for you when you activate right flows. Each of these, I want to note, can be fully customized to reflect your firm's needs. 
And so if anything that you find here, any specific task in any of these steps that I'm gonna highlight in a second, needs to be customized to maybe your specific processes, you do have that av option available to you. And so taking a look at the new client workflow template in specific, when we're looking at the workflows, this is a space where you can establish each individual step of what this workflow looks like. Every portion of what we're gonna be covering is customizable and can be tailored to what you need. So just to provide a preview of this particular template, so this comes with a couple of predefined tasks in the first step. So clicking into the prospect or referral step, you can see what is available here as some of those predefined tasks. And like I said, if you need to modify anything in the existing workflows, you can always come into here and make that specification. But we're gonna walk through the process of curating our own and brand new workflow. So when you wanna create a new template, you just click on add template. But I wanna note that you do have the option to copy one of the existing templates. So if you like the new client workflow, for example, and you wanted to create a copy of this and build off of it and create a, another 2.0 version for any specific reason or having an expedited new client workflow process, for example, you can do so by clicking on the downward arrow and copy current. But for us, we're gonna click on add template and we're gonna customize and create our own template. So when we click on add template, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna title this workflow. So we just click on the pencil icon and then we can begin to type into this field here. So let's start a workflow for one of the most important aspects of a client's life and for those that are gonna be close to retirement, which is the Medicare filing process. So this is gonna be our test workflow today that we're gonna be curating together. We're gonna to hit the check mark and that is gonna save the name of this template. Of course, you can always come back and modify it if needed. To start to build out our workflow, we need to first add a step. So let's click on the add step button. This is gonna add our first step of the workflow. And so we just click on the pencil icon. And once again, you can title what this step is as a key indicator. So this can be the informational phase of the Medicare filing process. So when we get that reminder of somebody's hitting that Medicare filing age or is close to it, this is the phase in which we're gonna to start to provide resources to have some of maybe those checkpoints of what is gonna be going on specifically for this client, just as an example. And so we can add a task to start to build out what this particular step is going to be made up of. When we curate a task within this step, we can assign a due date that is either gonna be tied to when we first activate this step, or if we want this to be activated when the workflow starts. So there's two different due dates that we can assign here. Number one is step activation. And so we can say we want this particular task to be due seven days after we activate this particular step. The other option is to have this occur when uh, seven days after a workflow starts. So this workflow starts option is typically utilized when we have a more pressing deadline that is more predefined and when the actual workflow starts. Whereas when we have step activation, this can is typically utilized to model those more fluid deadlines. So if we have a little bit more flexibility and it's gonna be reliant upon when we complete any of these steps, that's when we would choose step activation. So once we assign that due date, we can then click on the assign to dropdown and this will allow for us to assign who is responsible for this particular task. One of the perks of the WriteFlows tool is that you can assign tasks across the firm and across advisor or assistant or other licenses within Wright Capital while also fostering engagement with clients if they are invited into the system. So we can assign this to the advisor and the assistant and let's say that this is an internal task. Another aspect here is you can also mark the priority. So similar to how we actually curate tasks is you can mark this as a high priority task, low priority, or if it's no particular priority. For this one, let's mark it high priority. 
And then right here is where we indicate if we want this to be viewable by the client. If this is going to be an internal task, that is when we would select the eye icon. And this is no longer going to be something available for the client. And so this is going to be our internal task. So let's say this is going to be the review of current health care coverage with employer and previous notes. And that's going to be the first task that we have here. We'll see details listed out here as to who is responsible, what the task is, if it's visible to the client and the priority when we are looking at this task section as well. And so we can start to add another task. And so let's say that this is also going to be seven days. Once again, advisor, assistant, high priority and not visible to the client. And then review social security filing status. Hit save. And then we can have just these two. We can also add more if needed. But another feature of having one particular step is you do have the option to leave notes here. So in this note section, this is going to be purely internal facing. Clients will not have access to these notes. So this is a space where we can add a note. And this can either be the intention for what we're going to be discussing for this particular step or any sort of note that we want to make sure we are accounting for when we're talking about this particular step. And so maybe this is where we leave a note to ensure that we are reviewing their particular employer offerings and how that impacts Medicare filing. This is also a space where you can, of course, leave other resources, but this is just an example of how you can leave notes of that very, as very important aspect of Medicare filing is seeing what the employer situation might be as that's going to impact things down the road. So once we have that first couple tasks predefined there for that informational phase, let's add our second step here. And then this can be our action plan for filing. So we can title that step, hit the check mark, we can add a task. And let's say this is going to be 14 days after the step is activated. And this is going to be for the client and co-client. And we can mark this as high priority. And this is going to be the one for the client engagement aspect. So let's schedule a call. And you can even leave your Calendly link. And maybe before that call, though, we want to have them review or gather the documents from their employer. And it might be a space where you might leave some uh, additional resources too. So maybe this is also where we're gonna have them review our Medicare module as well. And this will be the client facing task. And since this is gonna be accessing the Medicare module, if we're engaging a client in right capital, let's add a task that's internal as well. So let's say this is gonna be eight days after the steps activated. This is gonna be specifically for the advisor and assistant. And it's going to be a reminder to grant the client access to the Medicare tab. So that way they get that information as well. Once again, you can leave notes here. So if we want to leave a, a link to maybe the Medicare government website, anything like that. But that's just an example of what it looks like when you start to curate that particular template. Once again, this can be modified at any point in time. And if you need to delete any, specific template for any reason, you can always hit the delete button here. One thing to note is that if we're looking at a template and you're trying to delete one, you will see a message here. So if we have a template that's currently in use, 
you will see a message here that says that this is currently in use, so you cannot delete this particular template. Another kind of streamlined aspect that can really establish and boost some collaboration across the board for your firm is that when we're looking at assigning responsibilities for tasks, is you can also designate specific groups within the firm. So once again, if you've got multiple advisors and then you're in that specific situation, that might be when you're creating specific groups available under right flows settings in particular and start to establish those groups, especially if you've got a team dedicated towards onboarding, anything like that, that is when you might be navigating to the settings group section and curating something there. And like I said, this is just that space where you start to establish that template but it's nice to see what that looks like. But moving on to what the full experience of the right flows module looks like, when you are in your advisor portal, if you have right flows activated, you will see in the middle of your dashboard, instead of you seeing the tasks module, you would then see the right flows module. Tasks will still be found in the dashboard, your task management tool. So this will still be available. It's just simply moved to under right flows and then here under tasks. And so you can still manage the tasks that are applicable for any of your clients, any ones that are applicable for you as well. And you can still add single task or task templates here as needed. One thing I wanna note is if you do activate right flows, if you do add a one-off task, you do have the ability to assign the responsibility for that task to all advisors in the firm, all assistants, or other members of your firm as well. So that's going to be the, the main difference when you're looking at this task advisor management dashboard is now when you go to add a single task, you have that option to engage other members of your firm. So this might be an instance in which maybe it's, it's not a workflow but you want to engage maybe your assistant in a conversation and say, hey, let's review Jane Smith's plan before our meeting. So it's going to be that more one-off task. But when we're looking at having that automated process and that streamlined workflow, that is when we start to go to the workflows station here. So once again, right flows, workflow station. And this is going to be a similar format. We have a couple different options for the viewing here. You can either view what we're seeing right now, or we can see the table view option. So if you prefer table view when we're looking at tasks, you do also have that similar format here from table view to board view. And this is the all workflows advisor station. So this is where you can see existing workflows and apply workflows. So if you needed to check in on any of the existing progress for maybe our quarterly year review workflow for our existing client, you can click into that workflow, see what has been completed so far and what is the current progress of this existing workflow. Here you can see which workflow is activated via the triangle icon located here. And we can see what is not yet activated within this particular workflow. You can also click into each of these to see the details if anything has been checked off. This one's not fully completed yet. But when we are wanting to apply a workflow, we would want to click on the Add Workflow button. And let's say we wanted to incorporate our Medicare filing process workflow. We have one of our clients that is reaching that age, so it is time to activate this particular automated workflow. So we can assign that starting date. So if we want it to start today, or maybe we want this to start on Monday, we can assign that starting date here. You also can set this to be a recurring workflow. So very important, maybe not for the Medicare filing one, but if you're looking at other automated processes in the right flows tool, if you're looking at that quarterly review workflow, if you, or if you've established other workflows that are gonna be recurring, that's when you wanna make sure you're activating the frequency here. It's gonna to default to just a one-time workflow, but from this dropdown, you can assign this to be an annual workflow, a semi-annual workflow, quarterly, or a monthly workflow. For the Medicare filing process, this is just gonna be a one-time workflow for this client. So we're gonna keep that selected. And then down below here, another aspect. So what I talked about earlier is that everything here is fully customizable to the need at that time. 
So when we're looking here at these steps and the tasks that are assigned for this particular workflow and for the client that we're about to assign it to, if we need to make any changes, that is available as an option always. So here in the include all steps toggle, you can choose which steps you want to incorporate. So if for this particular instance, when we're about to apply this workflow, if there's a step that is not relevant at that time, or maybe it's just not something that we need to address at the time, you can choose what you incorporate here. For this one, this is gonna be all relevant, so we're gonna keep those selected. And then we are going to choose which clients we are going to be assigning this to. So for us, we have a couple clients that are reaching that age. And you can scroll through the list to choose which clients you're gonna assign this to. And so let's say we're just assigning it to these two clients for now. And then down below, you can assign who this should be responsible for, for these workflows. So you can either assign this to all advisors, all assistants, some of these, those advisory groups that we've created, or specific people in our firm. And this is important as if we have a role associated in a step that is a task to an advisor or an assistant, whoever we select here is gonna be the person that is following through with that particular task's responsibility. So let's say we wanted to have this be applicable for all of our advisors. This is gonna be a, a collaboration effort to ensure that they are fully ramped up in the Medicare filing process. And we can assign this to all assistants as well. So it's gonna be an across the board workflow. This is also a nice aspect. So if we have anything that is an internal facing process that needs to be done across the board for the whole firm, this is another option for how you can illustrate that and have that cross board collaboration. So let's hit save. And we're now gonna see this as one of our available workflows. So we're gonna see here now the option for a Medicare filing process, which is the workflow I just established and applied to these two client plans. We can click into one of these, so the one for the Baratheon family, and we can see what has happened here. So we haven't activated this step because we set the activation date to Monday, but you can always click into this particular step. And let's say, for example, we needed to customize this further. So we know for the Baratheons, we need to make sure that we are reviewing their HSAs as well. So we can add a task here. Once again, it's similar steps to what we've been referencing before. We're gonna give, give ourselves six days. High priority and not visible to the client. And so we can add this task just for this current active workflow that is assigned to the Baratheons. And so we will now see that here. And we can also check in to see what our notes are. So we can see that we need to make sure we're reviewing what the current employer offering is and how that might impact their particular Medicare filing process. And you can click into each of these to make adjustments. So one of the aspects here is that you can fully customize each step and also remove tasks as needed. So maybe for them, we don't need this reminder to grant the client access to the Medicare tab. We've already invited them to view the Medicare filing tab so we can delete this task for them. And now that we've ensured that this is really fine tuned to what they need, we can hit the okay button. Another feature that within an active workflow that you're gonna find is these three dots in the upper right hand corner. If you need to delete this workflow at any time, if you know we don't wanna actually activate this, we can hit the delete workflow button and that will remove this current workflow. When we're looking at one of these currently active workflows, here we can view that check-in like we were saying of what is currently active, how much have we completed so far. And so looking at this quarterly review workflow, for the Brady family, one thing that is nice is that you can start to check off anything. So let's say that we you know, have already done all the tasks that are assigned to us as the advisor. We can check those off 
and we can complete all those tasks at once. And now we will see that we have three out of four tasks that are checked off. We are just waiting for that final completed task from the client. And we will also see that here. So we see that we fully completed step one. Step two for the mid-year check-in, we're just waiting on that last task. But when we get to that, you know, maybe phase where we actually we met the, with the client, we've reviewed everything, those current existing tasks are all completed. To easily move over to the next step, you can go to the right flows workflow station and we can actually drag this toggle to the next step and we can jump forward to either the next step or any of the future steps as needed. When you do so, it will notify you that there are outstanding tasks available in the previous step that have not yet been completed. And it'll ask if you need to complete all the existing and outstanding tasks, or if we should just be moving to the next step. So if we had that meeting and we've actually completed everything and we don't necessarily wanna go in and check everything off individually, you can easily complete all the available tasks. When you do so, you'll see that those steps, this last step is now completed. In the event where we need to move forward to the next step, so kind of talking about that more pressing matter or the more pressing timeline, if there's something that's really important that we need to address and we have a tighter schedule and we need to make sure that those next tasks are activated and maybe the client's aware of it or internally other advisors and assistants are aware of it, that might be when you would just select move to the next step and leave the other tasks as open. When we select move to the next step, these four tasks associated with the third step and the workflow are still active and they're not yet completed. And so that might be when we're, you know, we're trying to push forward in the, the last remaining step of the workflow. Like I said, really more relevant for some of those more pressing deadlines that we have. You know, maybe it's already at the end of the year. We think time has flown by and we need to make sure that we are pushing forward here and all of these are active and available. And so that's just some of the features for when we're looking at an individual active workflow. But when we're looking at this workflow station, as you're going to be noticing, there's a lot of information here you do have the option to further fine tune what we are looking at here. So right now I'm looking at all of the advisors on my team and in my workflows. You do have the option from this dropdown to filter out specific people. So we can just look at my associated workflows if needed, or maybe I'm working jointly with one of my teammates and I need to just view what we both have available to us. So we can have that check-in of, I see that I actually have a couple outstanding, my teammate currently doesn't have anything outstanding, so I need to make sure I work on that if we're working on a client together. You can kind of have that touch point of what is overdue for either of us, but it's also a space where you can just really just focus on your existing workflows. The next dropdown over here is another filter available to kind of fine tune what you're looking at here and focus on specific things. So we can either look at our active workflows and scheduled workflows. So one of my scheduled workflows is actually that Medicare filing process because that's scheduled for Monday. So it's not yet active. If I wanted to view solely my active workflows, that will focus it on a more honed conversation piece right here. So I can see that I have a couple that are overdue so for some of those tasks and those active workflows. We can also isolate our scheduled workflows. So that Medicare filing process and my new client workflow and we can also have that conversation of all of our completed workflows, which is just a nice space to see everything that you've accomplished over time and the progress of any of those completed workflows, either from your behalf or the client's behalf. You also have the option to isolate specific templates. So if you wanted to focus particularly on the Medicare filing process template that we curated, or any of these other templates, you can select those from the dropdown. And so that's how you can leverage and apply workflows in Right Capital. It's important to note probably that the second question on top of that addressing, how is this gonna improve your internal processes and your internal workflows? 
The other half is that in client engagement aspect. So once again, the right flows tool is intended to be an internal workflow management space. When we're looking at the client engagement aspect for each individual client, nothing changes from their experience in terms of what they view. They would still view the same space that they would have viewed before. So when a client logged in, if you've invited them to Ray Capital, of course, and if you've granted them access to the tasks tab, just for reference, they would view the same exact experience as before. So they would only see in the dashboard task section anything that is assigned to them as a task, and they would still view the same exact setup. So nothing is going to be changing here from the client aspect in terms of their viewability or their experience here. They would just see what tasks are active and assigned for them, and if anything is completed or overdue or due upcoming. What makes us another automated experience for your firm and your advisory practice is that if clients check off all of the existing tasks that are assigned to them and it completes a step within your workflow, it will automatically move them to the next step in the workflow. So what I mean by that is that let's say, for example, we had our client and we have completed all of these tasks and we have maybe all these tasks that are available for the client, they complete those remaining steps. Once they completed those, it would automatically move them to the next step in the workflow. So this is a fully automated process here in terms of if we have that client engagement aspect contributed, if they're making those adjustments and they're checking off those tasks as completed from their end, it would automatically push them to the next step and activate the next steps set of predefined tasks. So what that means too is that if there were any tasks in the next step that are assigned with the client, those would then become available and showing as active and due tasks for the client. That would also trigger any tasks that are assigned to advisors or assistants as well, but the client will not see your tasks that are marked as not visible to the client. So it's really important to note that does not change. If you mark something as private and it's not shared with the client, the client will not be able to view it. You would also be able to view what tasks are due within the task management section for your advisor portal as well. So this access once again remains the same. So nothing's really changing here except for some additional layers of functionality to boost team collaboration. So RightFlows is really intended to just be that space where you can fully work with your partners and your firm and your assistants and have some streamlined communication, some streamlined workflows, and to really foster stronger relationships with clients and make it be a little bit more of a white glove experience so that way you can dedicate more time towards building out your relationships and just applying some of these streamlined processes to boost that client collaboration and make it feel like they're more involved in the practice if you choose to engage them in that way. One of the key aspects to the client notification process. So that next question about the client experience is what notifications will they be receiving? So one of the more recent updates that we have that's available in your advisor portal is under the gear icon in the upper right hand corner and under client settings, and under notifications. Here under notifications, this is where you can set the presets and the defaults for client notification selections. So of course, I wanna note that when clients log in, they have full control over their notification preferences. So they can make any changes and adjustments to these notification preferences when they log in. So if they prefer for more reminders or less, they can always make that decision within the notifications section. But here in your advisor portal, this is where you set that preset default selections. So here's where you can check off if you want clients to be able to be reminded when new tasks are assigned to them. You can also set your preference for that reminder of when tasks are gonna be due. So if they're due today, they would get a reminder in a week or in two weeks. And then the frequency for overdue reminders as well. So if it's gonna be weekly, monthly, or if we want no reminder. And then at the very end, there's also an option to have 
clients be notified when anything is uploaded or there's activity in the vault. Once again, this is just a preset, so clients can always change their preferences and have more engagement or less. On that note, when you are looking about your personal notifications for tasks, you have a dedicated notification center. It's gonna be found under the bell icon in the upper right-hand corner and here under notification settings. This is where you can check off what you want to see notifications from. So if we're focusing primarily on those tasks, which are gonna be associated with a lot of those workflows, you can check off what you wanna see reminders of in terms of what tasks are upcoming for you. And if you wanna receive overdue reminders for tasks, and if you want a notification when new tasks are assigned to you. There are two facets to how you can receive these notifications. Number one, this first column is gonna be referencing if this notification that you check off is available in our notification center. So that's gonna be referencing this bell icon and here under notifications, this is where you can see all those notifications that you have checked off in that first column. So we can see that I have a couple tasks that are overdue for myself as an advisor for some of my clients. And under notification center settings, you can also see what you include and check off what you include in the daily report email. And that's gonna be available for the task section as well. So there is a batch email that you can receive every day. So once a day, you can receive an, a daily report email that will include everything you have checked off within this column. And so if there were new tasks that were assigned to you, you've got tasks that are gonna be due today in a week, two weeks, or if you have any tasks that are overdue and you're receiving that weekly reminder, you can have that be incorporated in that daily report email as well. And so that's for your own personal settings for you as the advisor for if things get assigned to you, especially when we're talking about workflows and having some of the automated processes, you can get that nice reminder, especially if a client marks anything off, you can get that reminder as well that maybe a new step in the workflow has been activated. One thing that's important to note too, when we're activating right flows as a tool in your firm's process, we currently are offering an extended trial period until April 26, 2024. So if you are interested in activating right flows and discussing the details of its activation, please feel free to reach out to the sales at rightcapital.com email, or you can leave a comment on this web, webinar's questions or Q&A section, or email a follow-up to that follow-up email, letting us know you're interested and we can always have them connect with you as well.